First question is from Erica Olson. What are some good stretches to increase squat mobility? Oh, good timing for this question. Yes. I just, uh, I know I've been, I think I've said it already two or three times on the podcast and I've been getting, I should, I got to be careful not to do this when I tell people something's coming or whatever, because yeah. I shot the video like fucking three weeks ago, but I do know that it takes process for us to get everything, you know, wrapped and edited and we have videos that are already lined up. And so I announced some shit and then it takes a while, but today, okay, it will already be up because it, it actually went up. Uh, yesterday, if you're listening, on Thursday. So uh, I just did a uh, combat stretch to uh, increase squat depth. Video, right? Yeah, video on that. And uh, when I think of the all the different, because there's there's a lot of things that you can do, and it's very individualized, right? So this is obviously this is we're 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 speaking uh, to specific issues that I've had, but I know that this is a very common in people. So. I would say this is probably common in a majority of people who need to work on. I, I agree too. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's which is why I started with this one first because <clears throat> when I think of all the mobility drills uh, and stretches that I did to improve uh, my squat depth, uh, by far uh, the combat stretch for my ankle mobility has been the biggest uh, game changer, uh, and so. I did a video on that, and I would say the a close second to that would be working on my hip mobility with the 90-90 variations. Mm -hmm. So the combination of those two uh, for my lower body has been a game changer. I can definitely speak to the ankle mobility, be, especially watching, too. I remember we, we held a seminar in here, and Dr. Brink kind of made an example of this of somebody who had re very limited squat depth. And uh, basically took them up front and was like, okay, but I'm going to have you now with elevated heels and raise you up substantially and let's see. And no problem, like super comfortable going all the way to depth mm -hmm. and just completely highlighted the fact that the ankles were, you know, the, the, the limiting factor there. I used to think um, it was the hips. I, and not to say that the hips don't play a role. There's definitely issues with people's hip uh, mobility that causes them problems when they squat. But I used to think that that was most of the issue. I have since changed my mind and realized that it's mostly ankle mobility issues that's the problem. 100%. And you can test this yourself. So if you're listening to the podcast right now and you find that you have difficulty going to depth, try squatting while you're up on your toes and you'll find all of a sudden, boom, you hit the ground, uh, no problem. This is why squat shoes mm -hmm. um, or placing a block under the heels helps because when you lift the heels... My ankles don't have to; uh, they don't have to flex as much, and so now I can go down lower. Well, this just goes to show you how much this is a, a common problem. Super that common. Something like squat shoes became a thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I it's mean, common. If it, if, it's, it was, if it wasn't common amongst almost everybody, it wouldn't have become something that's a, a standard piece of attire you wear when you're squatting for max load. Yeah, it's common because we almost never get our ankles in that position in regular everyday life. Right. You know, I mean, sitting, you're kind of in a squatted position a little bit, I guess. Um, but you, you, you did do nothing for your ankles, especially if you wear shoes with any kind yes. of a heel. Yes. Any kind Which of a heel. very common. Right. So running shoes, even tennis shoes, you know, comfortable shoes. If you look at your shoe right now, like I have a pair on right now and I look down at them, I notice that the heel is going to be a little bit higher off the ground than the front of my foot. Now, why is that? It's because shoe manufacturers have designed shoes around people's ankle mobilities, and it just feels more comfortable than a shoe that's completely uh, flat. Now, women, if you wear high heels and you wear those a lot for work, yeah, even worse. Even worse, and you you really start to your your body starts to form and shape around the way you move in everyday life, and so you lose ankle mobility. So the combat stretch done properly. So when we're going to attach that video to the show notes of this episode. Um, watch and listen carefully because when you're doing a mobility movement like uh, like the combat stretch, um, intention is key. It's not just about going through the motion like you'll see Adam do it in the video. Don't just copy him, but pay attention to what he says and how you need to activate and where you need to pull up on the toes and mm -hmm. what how your you, knee's doing and yeah, the whole process. Yeah, that makes uh, all the difference in the world. So I would say start with the, with the ankles. Then I would say go up to the hips. And work on, uh, you know, 90 90 is a great position because it works on what's known as internal and external rotation, meaning mm -hmm. the front leg is turning out, the back leg is turning in, or and you whatever. You kind of cover both bases that way. Yeah. And then you'll switch sides, and that'll help work on the, the your hips' ability to stabilize um, while you're squatting. And I think those two things in 
uh, a majority of people, uh, there's always individual variants, probably uh, will be a good prescription. Agreed. 